Oh boy. Here we go. Well, Fishing Freaks, welcome on back to the channel. Thank you for being here. And uh, today we are gonna be in my little creation cave right here. This is where I edit videos, prepare for adventures and such. Just behind this wall is my garage, otherwise known as the Dangle and Woodworking Cave. And that's where I do my, my outdoor equipment tootling and such. Which by the way, today we're talking about uh, live scope and um, imaging technology underwater and the future of fishing. Just a side note before we get into the topic, I'm looking for inspiration from you guys. I've been uh, reading comments. I uh, just want to say thanks to all you that um, are dropping me some good comments and stuff right now. So I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And today's video, I guess, will be brought to you by, since the mailman just dropped these off, the Team Guggen Summer Bundles. These are going up uh, very soon. You can check them out at GuggenSquad.com, link down below. But these are basically the summer uh, essentials and more. And these are just lures that we picked out that we thought would be um, pretty sweet for the summertime. And then this one it actually has a uh, more than just baits. You get exclusive hats. Look at that. Has the bass on it. You get the tumbler so you can get your drink on with it. And then, of course, all the plastics and hard baits you need for summer day. So live scope, let's get into it. This is exciting, not even new technology. It's been around uh, for a minute now that is allowing you, the angler, to in real time see fish in a way that has never been done before, at least in freshwater fishing. It is expensive, it's expensive for the units and the transducers but what I'm seeing now on the water is, uh, I'm going to say at least a third of anglers, probably more like half of anglers that I see in bass boats on the water now when I go to lakes have live scope imaging technology. And I can tell because they're just staring at it, <laughs> zombieing out as I do myself. And you, you recognize that now. So what we're going to be talking about is how this technology is so amazing, uh, helping us catch more fish, but then also the future of it. So when I first saw live scope technology, uh, I was in a friend of mine's boat, Tom Reddington, FLW, uh, tournament angler. Uh, we were on a clear lake. It was Lake Austin in Texas, uh, or Lake Travis. And he was showing me this, and I was like, what in the world? I mean, how, how does this work? Like how? is this really going to help? Like I really didn't see it then. I, I was, he was showing me it and I was like looking at fish, uh, but we weren't catching, like visually seeing the fish come up to the bait or anything. We're just kind of looking at fish. He was like, here's one over here. Don't let me paint over here. And here's one over here. You can see this. And I, it was different, but I was like, eh, you know, I'm a 2d or whatever. I can, I can get a buy just fine side imaging, uh, whatever. I didn't see it as a clear advantage when I first saw it. As I started to get into other anglers boats and see it, I was like, oh, you know, this is, this is kind of cool. And then eventually when I got it on the Silver Bullet, my boat, that's when I really started playing with it and looking at it and going, oh, okay, this is, uh, this is, this is a whole different program because it is not even, when you start paying attention to it and fishing with it, is a completely different style of fishing. There's really, there's live scoping and then there's going fishing. That's what it's turning into. So you've got Garmin with the live scope. You've got, Hummingbird has 360, which I don't even have, but it's, it's a similar technology. The point is we're getting better and better at looking at fish in real time. So if you're a tournament angler, knowing and understanding and utilizing live scope, is not even a question whether you should be doing it now. It would be like if you were in a, a log cutting competition using an ax versus a chainsaw. Chainsaw obviously being live scope imaging technology. I'm sure everyone's familiar with it now, but I'm just reference, referencing it to anyone that doesn't know what this is. It is, uh, it is completely game changing in fishing. It is different in a way from when, when I first started 
bass fishing and using 2D sonar to have to look at it and, and formulate. You really have to think in your mind, well, I think this is, I think this is a, a group of rocks here and a brush pile. Uh, and I see some arcs right here off this edge. I think they're probably bass. I'm not sure, but I'm gonna stop the boat. I'm gonna drop the troll motor. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw a marker buoy out because back then you didn't have spot lock and all that. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna fish this spot and see what's down there. I'm gonna feel what's down there with my Carolina rig or throw a big crankbait or something like that. And then side imaging came along. When hummingbird side imaging came along, that's when I really started tournament fishing. Uh, doing more higher level tournaments, same sort of thing. Everyone had to have it, you had to learn it. And it was a huge advantage because then you could look at your 2D and compare it with the the real looking imaging of the, of the side of what's going on. Oh, I can see a tree, oh, that is a tree. Oh, that is a group of rocks right there. That's a sunken boat. I didn't know that thing was there. Or a weed bed, there's a weed bed out here. That's, that's what we're catching these fish in. Little things that you, you just don't really notice uh, if you're just 2D and cast it out there. And then down imaging came along and then you could really compare what's under the boat in real time. That's one of the biggest, biggest learning factors I, I've had in bass fishing is using that split screen of 2D and down imaging and comparing those two and, and then really learning. Uh, okay, that is what that is what that is. And then detailing what kind of fish are those? You know, oh, those are carp, or, or these are bass, these are crappie. I can tell the way they're suspended right here, they're grouped up. So it, it keeps advancing, and now with live scope, you can do all of that and more. You can say, oh, that's definitely a rock right there, and that is definitely a bass, and that bass is sitting on the left downward side of that rock right there, and he's chasing a bluegill around that. I'm just gonna put the scope on it and I'm gonna throw my jig past that rock. Oh, it looks like I need to readjust my cast. Throw back at, I mean, you can get, get them on the nose and I've done it with crappie a bunch. Uh, it's a great example. I've done it with bass too, but if I crappie fish a lot now. I love doing it and live scoping them is, it's not like shooting fish in a barrel, but goodness, if, they're, if they are just sitting on a spot and you can live scope them, could really dial them in. So this last year and a half, just learning it is so exciting. It's, it's awesome. You're getting to really see and understand things. Oh, this is, I've been fishing this for years. I didn't know, oh, I really like to sit on this side of this thing, all of that. But where I started to realize that this could have an impact on fisheries in the future is when I went live scoping for crappie. Uh, I went with a uh, a crappie fishing, a tournament crappie fishing professional guide. I did a video on it, it was on Truman Lake. You guys can go back and watch it. It was with Kyler Beckman. And we were catching crappie live scoping. Really learned a lot from him on it. But the crazy thing was that almost all of our fish, I'm gonna say 90% of our fish were suspended female crappie. And just judging from other anglers uh, that were coming in, fish that they were catching were mostly male crappies that were up in the trees. And we were specifically targeting these bigger crappie, which are the females, and they were in a resting part of their, their life cycle at that point. They're just resting to, to move up and spawn. All of these fish were full of eggs. Of course, every fish we caught is legal. There's no discrimination between male and females. You're just going after the bigger ones. The bigger ones just happen to be females and you could tell on the live scope which are the big ones, have the biggest signatures. When a fish is suspended like that in open water, uh, they're very, very hard to catch traditionally. That's the hardest fish to catch. Bass, crappie, whatever, is a fish that's just suspended it's hanging out, it's not around any cover, feeds every once in a while, you know, it's almost pelagic. So that's when I started realizing, well, if everybody gets on this program, we're gonna see a decline in crappie because all these females, these big females are about to reproduce, are being caught and filleted. You almost never turn, ba turn back a crappie. Luckily, crappie are prolific reproducers 
they have a ton of eggs, they make a lot more crappie. So that is, that is a good thing. And they reach a bigger size uh, pretty quick. One of the first things I thought of after that was, well, can you do this with bass? And you know, Kyler was like, uh, yeah, of course, of course you can. Then I came back and went to my local lake. I started noticing suspended big bass off of points and I, I caught a few of them. They're, they're more difficult, way more difficult to catch than the crappie were. Then we also saw the huge big bass explosion happening on OH Ivy with a lot of those bass being suspended, being caught, and it's, it's, and it's been happening everywhere. It's just kind of quietly, no one's really talking about the long-term effects of what we're doing with LiveScope. And live scoping is not the only factor that affects our fisheries. There's other things. I'll be doing other videos, we'll just say that. I want to start the conversation here. I wanna hear from you guys in the comments. What do you think about live scope for the future? And this is how I want you to think about it. If there was a magical tool that you could go to the water with that unveiled where every fish was, every notable big bass was, that gave you a high probability of catching that fish, would you would you want that? Uh, would you want to utilize that every time you went out on the lake or do you want to keep some of the mysticism around fishing where it's this kind of mythical thing, we don't really know what's down there, that, that section of, of timber looks really good or this and that. Uh, and every once in a while you catch that big one and it's really special because it's this you know, mythical thing <laughs> or do you want to know exactly? Oh, I see that. Oh, that's, uh, that's eight and a half pounds right there. We're gonna throw that jig out there, knock them on the nose. Not saying you catch every fish like that on live scope. You definitely don't. But is that something you want everyone to have, or would you want to just keep it for yourself? Conversation. So let me know in the comments what you think about that and what you would want and what do you think about the future of our fisheries using this technology because it's not gonna stop right here with LiveScope. We've all seen the evolution over the last 20 years, if you've been paying attention, if, you, if you've been alive that long, of graphs. They started out with paper graphs even before that. And then we've seen 2D, and then we see side imaging, and then we see down imaging, and then we see LiveScope and, and 360. What's next? What's next? I propose we might have some ocular setup. I mean like a wearable device, some sort of headset, eyepiece that goes on, allows you to look through the water where you have a transducer scanning. It's giving you the real-time readout, the distance, uh, you know, where basically where exactly do you need to cast and it'll be like a heads up display, something like that. That's where I, I think it's probably gonna head. I could be wrong. But eventually we are gonna get to the point where there's no mystery anymore. There, there's no mystery of what is down there, how big the fish is, how many of them are there, are we sure about the species? There won't be any of that. So is that what we all want? Or do we want to keep some of the mystery behind fishing. How do you stop it though? How do you stop the technology? I, I don't know if you can. You can't put LiveScope back in the box. So let's talk about solutions. So when I was on the water the other day doing some live scoping, I noticed something that got me thinking about a theory, maybe something that could happen with the evolution of bass with the technology changing. And I want you guys to think about this as well. I was looking at a, a crappie fishing, this is a brush pile. You know, there's there's bass that hang around brush piles as well. I catch a lot of bass out of brush piles in the summer. Uh, but I was, I was looking at crappie and I kept seeing a bass that would, that would come over to the brush pile and I was sitting right on top of it. And the crappie I was catching, and it, and it would get kind of close and then it would back up. It would get kind of close and it would back up. And I got to thinking, what if that is a bass that has recognized the ping, the sound of live scoping, that strong click? Most bass, we catch and release. So they, rec they could recognize that sound and start to run away from it 
or swim away from it when they hear it. Whereas a crappie, most of the time, you know, I'm not letting the crappie go if it's legal length. I'm putting that in the boat. It's life is done. It's going to the grease. It, it might have picked up on the live scope for a little bit, but it's in the boat now, so it, it doesn't really matter. Whereas a bass, we're letting them go. Tournament fishing, letting them go. They could start to pick up on this and push away from it. One of the things that I think could really help bass in fisheries that are being heavily scoped is grass, tons of shallow cover. And you could see bass evolve into staying shallow more in the summer, whereas you get more and more boats just out there with click, 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 just clicking all on these offshore spots and these places that have always been havens for bass to go out and, re and relax and recover and post-spawn and then pre-spawn. Uh, they have no recovery point anymore. There's nowhere to hide in the lake. So you might see bass start to push into as thick of cover as they can where that's like the last, the last place where you can't just peer in and, and penetrate through and really target bass. It's thick grass, you know, really heavy brush and cover and shallow, you know, live scope is, it's not really effective in that less than a few feet of water. So you could see the adaptation of that down the road, but interesting thought and something I noticed while I was fishing. So I think from an ecological standpoint, fishery standpoint, really, we need to be focusing on uh, how do we give more habitat to our fish? How do we get more fish in our lakes that are just getting hit so hard? Uh, just in general, fishermen are the most in tune, especially tournament anglers, people that fish all the time. Uh, they're in tune with, with what is going on in the lakes and they're gonna know, they're gonna recognize when uh, fisheries are starting to decline a little bit. So I think we need to stock more fish. I think we need to have more uh, fish, fish stocking in a lot of the lakes that are getting pressured. And there's other solutions that I'm gonna mention in, in other videos come down the road. But I do wanna know from you guys, what do you think? Like, what, what's a solution that you think uh, is, is gonna help in the future? Because it's, we can't just be thinking about next year. Uh, we gotta think about five, 10 years down the road here. How are we gonna protect our fisheries from the increase in this technology that is is really having an impact now. Because I care about the future of fisheries. I care about uh, my kids and all young anglers. I want them to have a fantastic experience when they go out to the lake. I don't want it to be so tough in the future where you just have to be an expert to go catch them. Uh, I think fishing should be fun for everybody and you wanna get uh, young people hooked on it the first time they go, you know, um, not make it a, a really difficult, <laughs> tragic experience that takes 10 times to, to, to have a good impact and make, make you want to do it again. So that is my two or three cents or a dollar or whatever on this subject right now. But I'm going to continue using LiveScope because it's there, it's available. I'm just starting to think in the future. What do we need to do to keep on snatching fish at the lake? So thank you all very much for tuning in today. And I'll also mention I uh, was reading comments over at the Guggen Labs page. And a lot of you are really digging that. Uh, if anyone that hasn't heard of the Guggen Lab page, it is linked down below. You can go check it out. And it's basically just short videos uh, that we're putting together over there that are just hitting topics quick. You know, uh, the latest ones like sight fishing from the bank. Um, we're doing more summer stuff. We're trying to keep it uh, relevant for the time of year, but we're really just building a big library over there of, of little things to, to help on, on really specific little topics. So that's linked down below. And if you want to subscribe to this channel, go ahead and do so. We are over a million subscribers. Thank you so much for being here. Go ahead and smash that like button if you like more fishing topics like this. Uh, me just spitballing down here in the cave. I appreciate you guys. I'll see you on the next one.